lose track of your surroundings when you drive by every single day. And so one day I drove by and Wheeling was in was done. It was demolished and it was in a cut up pile of scrap. It's like, oh my God, how did I miss that? How did I miss that going on? I just, I missed the whole thing. And so that's what got me into this foundry because I was like, well, if something that significant is about to change, someone needs to get in there and shoot it, yeah. photograph it at least. I just gave it my best shot and hoped for the best. And uh, fortunately it fit to what the uh, jury was looking for that year and uh, the images were strong and they awarded me a grant. So yeah, I was thrilled. I think it was like November 2006, late October, early November. I just bought my brand new digital SLR camera and I got access. So I basically learned how to use my camera here. <laughs> and I just took a ton of pictures to experiment and to play with the camera and to... I mean, I wanted to photograph everything I saw, even whether I knew what it was or not, you know? I just wanted to make sense of it later, at least take a picture of everything and then sort it out later. Or, you know, when I started meeting people, um, they would point things out and say, oh, that was where I worked, or this is what's happening in this picture. And so I... I I kind of always imagined that I would reconstruct the foundry afterwards. I think I showed about 45 pieces and so far 20 have sold, which is amazing. You know, I was just really surprised at some of the things that did sell, like some of the editorial documentary stuff, because some of it to me was just, you know, I mean, it is um, a little sad and depressing and kind of graveyardish, but those seemed to be the ones that people were most attracted to. So this is a, a photograph of a shelf in somebody's locker that I stumbled upon. These things look like they came out of the back pocket of somebody's jeans and he came to work. Maybe he worked Sunday, you know, maybe that was the sermon he just came from. Maybe it was the last sermon he heard before he lost his job. I don't know, but he left all these things in his locker, including the one ads of looking for another job. You know, fart humor is the original joke. <laughs> it transcends generations. Like a peanut. <laughs> Our industrial heritage means more to people than than maybe even they realize themselves. You know, now that it's gone and we're totally looking back on it. It means more to people than maybe it did while it was up and running or even still in the skyline, which I guess is kind of typical. You know, we get kind of romantic about history if it's, if we're that far removed from it. I didn't know it was going to, when I came to the foundry, it was going to lead to all this. I was always attracted to it. It was a place and fascinated by what was inside. And then just found a way to get in. But my intention wasn't, I'm going to do a documentary on that. I just wanted to photograph it and explore it. And then the more 
I mean, it just took over. <laughs> it just took me away, you know. I kind of started following it after a while. There's still, there's still the voices of the workers to, to work with and the um, material culture I've gathered from things that they would give me, their notebooks, their scraps, their, you know, other weird little things, um, and, you know, a lot of the video I shot. So I hope that one day I can do something with marrying all of it and layering all of it into, like, a multimedia way to do history and modern art.